right along. What if we want to find derivatives of exponential or logarithmic functions? In other words, I want to know how fast something's changing, rate of change of an exponential function at a particular time. So let's take a look. What are some things that you think of right away that grow exponentially? La, la, la. Can you think of anything? Lots of stuff. Population, you know, definitely. Um, growth of bacteria. Okay, we can also have decay. So when we think about exponential growth, exponential functions, we ha also have to think about exponential decay as well. A removal of drugs from the body, the drug coming out of your body. So definitely a lot of things in this class, in, in a biology class, that you're going to see exponential functions. Uh, we're going to look at finding derivatives for all of these. Some, I'll just say, this is the derivative. We'll need another section before we can actually show the proof. And then some will actually go through form formal proofs. So what if I asked you to find the derivative of e to the x? And, the only, and I said at x equals 1. And the only thing you know right now, because we don't know a shortcut, is that I could plug in 1 for x, and I could just plug in some small number for h, 0 0.1, 0 0.001, whatever. All right? And so then from here, where I see x, I would plug in 1 plus 0 0.1. Where I see x, I would plug in 1. So this is going back to our limit definition. And so if I do this, I get 2.859. Well, let's make the gap smaller, 2.732. Make the gap smaller. So all I'm doing is putting these in my calculator now. And as you could see, it looks like it's approaching as x is getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. It looks like it's approaching some value. Do you recognize that value? That's E. So in other words, that's Euler's famous number, 2.71828 and so on. Just like pi, it's just uh, we use E to represent this number. Okay. And so, as, so basically what this is saying is as I let H get smaller and smaller and smaller, it looks like I'm just getting back to E. So let's use our definition of the derivative and say, well, what if it was for any value of x and see what happens? So where I see x, I plug in x plus h. Where I see x, I plug in x. Um, this, if you remember, let me go this way back here. When you multiply with the same bases, you add the exponent. So all, all I'm doing is, is reversing that. So I'm separating by adding my exponents by multiplying, same base. And then here, as you could probably see, I'm going to be able to factor out an e to the x. The only part that we care about is with the h, because this says as h goes to 0, what does this piece right here approach? So that's what I'm actually going to examine, is what, what I have in parentheses if I let h get really, really small, what does this value become? Well, let's let h get really, really small. So if I plug in really, really small negative values, really, really small positive values, it looks like this piece right here, and you should put this in your calculator, e raised to the 0 0.001 minus 1 divided by 0 0.001. It looks like coming from either side that when h gets small, this entire function is going to 1, which is what we call our limiting value. So we're saying that that piece is going to 1. So I still have my e to the x that I factored out front. We're saying this piece right here goes to 1. Remember, e to the x, that's going to just be our constant. So that's just out front. This piece goes to 1, so this implies that the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. And it is. I mean, all students love this one. So the derivative of e to the x is the function e to the x. All right, so if I wanted to say, for example, well, let's find the derivative of 2 e to the x. Remember we had that constant rule that we could just bring the constant out front and then just take the derivative of our function? The derivative of e to the x is e to the x, so the derivative of 2e to the x is 2e to the x. 
what if we have this function here? Now notice this is different. This isn't your um, same exponential where you have e to the x. Here we have some other value, okay, call it a to the x. Unfortunately, we need the chain rule, which is in the next section for me to show you the proof of this, so hold on. But I'm just going to tell you right now the derivative, if you have a function in this form where a is just some number, say 5 to the x, then to find the derivative, you do ln of that base, remember the big number we call the base, and then a to the x, so that just gets repeated. So for example, if I want to find the derivative of 3 to the x, it would be ln of 3 and then times 3 to the x. If I want the derivative of 4 times 5 to the x, again the 4 just goes out front, I'm just finding this derivative right here. The derivative of 5 to the x, I can look straight up here, or ln of 5, 5 to the x, and I still have the 4 out front. The 4 does not multiply anything because, one, this argument's inside my log, and this is attached to my exponent. So that's just simply the answer. If I have a function, we call it e to the kt, where k is a value, once again, need the chain rule to prove this, but what you do is whatever value is on k comes down, and the e to the kt stays the same. That's important. Okay, so if I have, for example, the derivative of e to the 2t, the 2 comes down, and then the e to the 2t stays the same. If I want to look at log functions, if you remember that uh, logs and exponents are inverses of each other, so looking at the derivative of ln of x, uh, we'll go into a more former for formal proof, but the derivative would be 1 over x. Let's, we haven't talked about graphs a whole lot um, here in a while, so let's look at if this is the function, this function is increasing the entire time. That's why the derivative is graphed above the x-axis. Remember that? And so even though the slope is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, which is what we're seeing here, this is still always positive. If I, for example, want to find the derivative of ln of x divided by 2, well, we said the derivative of ln of x is 1 over x, so I could separate and bring out the 1 half. Notice 1 half times ln of x is the same thing as ln of x over 2. Then I can throw the 1 half, my um, constant out front. I can say the derivative of ln of x, which is 1 over x, and then simply multiply them. So as you can see in this section, there's a lot of shortcut formulas that you want to have on your formula sheet, but then be able to go through an example to use them. Because this is where you're going to get to in this course is all applications. It says the population of Nevada, P in millions, can be approximated by this function where T is in years since the start of 2000. At what rate, so right away I know I'm going to have to take a derivative, was the population growing at the beginning of 2009. So I know then I want my instantaneous rate of change at t equals 9 because 2000 to 2009. So what I need to do first is find the derivative. Finding the derivative would be in this application the change in population over change in time. So in other words millions per year. Change in p population over change in time for this function. Notice going back to all, all the examples that we did, this looks like the a to the x. So I bring the 2020 out front and then I say this piece right here once again looks like the a to the x. So the 2020 just stays out front. The base 1.036, so ln of 1.036 and then you just repeat the 1.036 to the t. Now, I, so what I found was I found the derivative function for any time, okay, year since the start of 2000. If I want it for t equals 9, I just simply plug in 9, and I get 98.22, which says 98.22 million of people per year is the rate the population is growing in 2000, at the beginning of 2009. 
All right, another example says at time t, hours after it was administered, the concentration of drug in the body is giving by, given by this function. I see an e to the kt. That's the big thing is recognizing what kind of function you have to take derivatives. So it says the concentration is this. What is the concentration four hours after it was administered? So that's just plugging in four into the value of the function. Okay, this is the concentration in nanograms per milliliter. So that's how your units for your answer. And now if I want to know the rate, so what is the rate the concentration's changing at that time? As soon as I see the word rate, take the derivative. I throw the 27 out front. This is the e to the kt. So the k, the negative 0.14 comes down. I leave the e to the kt alone. And now I can simply plug in 4 because at that, at that changing at that time, I said at somewhere in here uh, 4 hours after it was administered. And this would show me negative because it's leaving the body. Uh, negative 2.16 nanograms per milliliter per hour. Okay, so remember this is the concentration. And then our derivative is the concentration per time. All right, and so a lot in that section, okay, to go slow through and practice on your homework questions and ask me anything if you get stuck.